Well, I'm delighted to be joined by Dr. David Caron, art historian and writer, whose specialism is the area of Irish stained glass. And I'm delighted that David is here to uh, join us this afternoon to um, discuss these wonderful Harry Clark uh, cartoons for stained glass windows, uh, which have come to us for the uh, forthcoming sale of Irish art from the collection of Patrick McEntee Senior Counsel. So uh, David, um, these the first two are from, uh, it's a two light window for a church in Wexford Town. So would you like to tell us a little bit about them? Yes, um, like you say, it's a two light window. Um, it is a war memorial window in the Catholic Church in Bride Street in, Wix in Wexford, um, commissioned by uh, a local couple, um, the O'Keeffe's. Uh, Mrs. O'Keefe uh, seemed to deal mainly with Harry Clark, and it commemorates their son, their second son, uh, William, who, who died in the war. Um, what we're looking at is uh, the Madonna and Child, obviously, enthroned, and opposite um, St. Aidan uh, and St. Uh, Adrian, uh, adoring, as it's described, uh, the Madonna and Child. Um, so it's, it's a, a window with terrific detail. Uh, the cartoons are superb and uh, show remarkably what Harry Clark had intended, how he would paint the windows. Right. Uh, and they're very tonal. I mean, people associate Harry Clark obviously with stained glass, but also with very crisp black and white illustrations. Mm. So these are far from, they're crisp on a certain level, but they're far from black and white. Sure. They're very tonal and to a larger degree, they kind of, um, suggest the, the painted, subtle painting that he was going to employ. Um, they also have very practical reason. They show all the, the lead lines uh, that he was going to use. So uh, they're very instructive as to how the window would have been constructed. Right. And would it have been normal for Harry to paint or to, to prepare his cartoons? Because of course, remember, these weren't is that, you know, we consider them artworks now, mm -hmm. but they were very much a sort of a pattern that the, the actual window was going to follow. So would he have normally gone to the, the huge level of detail in not, the cartoons as we see here? Yeah, not always. These were very early on in his career. And um, what, what maybe I should mention is preceding this, he would have had probably a few meetings with the client, uh, with the O'Keeffe's, and would have, um, on the basis of that, prepared small scale coloured, usually coloured drawing, and that would, on that basis then he would uh, scale up to this size. It's quite a jump, so the scale initially one inch to the foot, then right up to full scale. Um, and uh, I think because, partly because he was quite early on in his career, and maybe for to reassure the clients possibly, and I'm speculating a bit here, but mm -hmm. these are, are, are rather more detailed than, than, all, than others are. I mean, they're incredibly right. rich and uh, precise. Uh, down to tiny details, all these little vignettes of the risen Christ, of the crucifixion, uh, loads of the floral detail, uh, the chalice, um, it just it just goes on and on. It's all over the place. I just I love the, the level of detail where you see here with uh, the Madonna's shoes with these lovely some sort of almost pomegranate pom poms. <laughs> That's right. Um, yeah. On top of a cushion. Yeah, no, there it's it's quite typical of Clark. Like he reveled in. Uh, fabric in, uh, in detail, in richness, um, and, and the same can be said of the male saints as well, like they're equally uh, resplendent in very elaborate uh, brocades, embroidered material and so on. And of course when it's translated into colour in, in the real window, they completely come to life. Uh, but at the same time this gives a very precise, uh, clear idea to the clients and to the artist uh, as to how he would proceed and actually paint the glass. Um, yeah. The only thing that's missing, uh, which is characteristic of Clark, is that he's only indicated where the heraldic uh, crest will go. Right, and but hasn't put in the wording. Inscription, yeah. Right, okay. He, yeah, um, uh, he would have supervised, of course, but he didn't relish inscriptions, for instance, and he usually uh, 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 got one of the um, apprentices to, to do that, um, often okay. a, a friend of his, Austin Malloy. So you'll see a right. blank, but really nothing else has been left to uh, to detail uh, or, or to uh, to chance, and yeah. um, I'm just looking again. You'll also see, for instance, WOK. That's yes, the deceased boys' uh, initials. Initials. Yeah. Um, this wonderful see. little vignette, the view of the church in yeah, of Oxford, of, of uh, Bride yeah. Street, the actual yeah. church, and um, 
You know, it's quite typical of Clark. He would have visited the place and all his windows are very much bespoke pieces, like he's responding to the client's requirements yeah. uh, or their, their wishes. Um, he's taking into account the architecture, uh, the aspect of the, of the window, uh, the, this one and it's the other window as well, relatively low down. So it afforded him the opportunity to go to introduce loads of detail that the viewer could appreciate. And I think at his best, he often was, uh, it was these kind of windows rather than the very big, uh, maybe a three light window uh, that's much higher up and it has impact of course and drama. Yes. But I think these ones uh, bring, out, uh, bring out his talent most really. And I suspect what he enjoyed the most as well. Yeah, and certainly, I mean, the, the complexity of the, the, um, the detail is, is absolutely incredible. It's hard to, you know, it's hard to understand just how difficult that is to produce as a stained glass. I mean, one thing, yeah. I'm doing it on paper, mm -hmm. but then to actually sort of paint it onto glass, yeah. that's obviously where his real skill lay, yeah. be able to bring this, these, these scenes to, to, to life. Now, the, the third one we have here is a single um, window for a church, in the Church of Ireland Church in Kalini, and it's yeah. called the Lloyd Memorial. It is, yes. It's, it's interesting to have the, the, the three panels together, these being a pair, this one separate, but mm. they were all uh, made, the cartoons were made in 1918, and we know that uh, Clark was working on them concurrently, and um, Nicola Gordon Bow, the, the late Dr. Gordon Bow, who's yes. the, the expert on Harry Clark, she, writing about his work of this period, she said that Clark worked best when he was working on more than one work at a time. Okay. It's such a kind of creative, energy mm. that he liked to kind of, I wouldn't say flit from one to another, but it kind of really brought out the best in him. So, and we know from his diary that in September 1918, he uh, had meetings with uh, Mrs. Lloyd in the morning in Kalini and then Mrs. O'Keefe in oh, Wexford in the afternoon. Right. So that's just indicative yeah. of how uh, he was moving from one to the other. Yeah. So what's the story about this one? Where, why, why, was it, why was it designed and what was the, the window for? Yeah, well, like you say, it's for um, Holy Trinity Church in Kalini, Church of Ireland. Um, it was commissioned by a Mrs. Lloyd uh, and in memory of her late husband, who was a solicitor who had offices in Dublin. And they lived out in uh, one of Kalini's most prominent residences, what was then called Victoria Castle, now Aisha yes. Castle. Yes. And um, home she, to a very famous uh, singer. Home to a very famous singer indeed. It is. Uh, and um, at the time uh, when the Lloyds lived there, um, they had a, a very prominent neighbour, uh, Lawrence or Larky Waldron, yes. who was a stockbroker in town. He was also an MP, and he was also a very early champion of Harry Clark. And he commissioned panels from Harry Clark in. 1915, which is very early on in Clark's career in terms of stained glass, a series of nine panels for his uh, his study or his library, which was the main reception room in the house. Mm. And um, it would seem certain that Mrs. Lloyd saw these panels, and uh, it was it was smitten by them, and on that basis then uh, commissioned Clark to design a a, a window in her husband's memory. Um, at that point, he had no windows in Dublin, for instance, like he had okay. produced relatively few windows. Yeah. Uh, Conan Hostel uh, in, in Cork between 1915 and 1970, yeah. Castle Townsend. But uh, he still, although they were tremendous success, the Conan Hostel ones, he was still kind of establishing his reputation in the capital. Uh, you know, for uh, uh, the people in the know knew his work, other people would have been unfamiliar with it. Right. And of course, this is the angel of peace and hope, mm -hmm. um, which is timely for us to be looking at something like that, given the, the current stage of the world. Yes. Um, but the, um, the border of vignettes around, the, around this figure mm -hmm. are, quite, are quite lovely. I mean, there's everything from, you know, there's, there's a lighthouse just here. Yes. Um, which again, I suppose, given that Kalini is quite close to the, the coast. Yeah, I, um, think, um, I think ultimately we have two lighthouses, but you're absolutely right. And I think it may be partly referencing uh, Kalini's coastal location. It might also be tying in with the theme of the angel of peace and hope that a, a lighthouse can be seen as a beacon of hope. 
Yeah. And um, because of course this is th these were being designed in 1918. Yeah. So they've had four years they've had of war four in years Europe. Of war in Europe. And yeah. Mrs. Lloyd's late husband, uh, who carried the same name as her husband, Clifford Lloyd. He was serving in, in the army, he was in France. Now, he, he survived the war, but clearly it was, you know, it would have been at the forefront of hers and, and, and many uh, people's minds who had relatives, close relatives, um, serving on the front. And um, I, it, this, you know, it, it does, there is a sense of optimism and hope. And what's kind of nice is that when Clark completes the window in February 1919, of course, war had concluded so yes. there's kind of a, a happy outcome the, the, uh, the whole, to it yeah um, and so am i right in understanding that that it was thought that that window had been commissioned as a memorial to a fallen yes. son but then yeah. you've since discovered that it was it, that it didn't have anything to do with the war per well, se not directly yes initially it was thought that it was a more memorial and one can understand that and um, because of the date and you know the sense of uh, uh, peace and uh, hope and optimism and uh, the inscription indicates that it is to Clifford Lloyd um, but the understanding initially was that it was Clifford Lloyd the the nephew the soldier but in fact uh, he survived the war okay, as we right, know right, and yes. in fact it was to Mrs Lloyd the donor it was in memory of her own husband not her nephew who happily survived right. Um, right and again the inscription left blank but it's been very carefully lettered in uh, in the church if, if one yes. looks at it you can absolutely, see a absolutely. really beautiful piece of, of uh, lettering so i believe that you came across these these cartoons a long time ago. a long time ago i yes i did i i, I remember these well because um in 1979 i helped the late Dr. Gordon Bow um, put up an exhibition of Harry Clark's work in uh, the Douglas Hyde Gallery in Trinity. And these cartoons were among the, uh, the key exhibits, really. Uh, they were selected by her because of their quality from the collection of David Clark. Uh, David Clark was the younger son of Harry Clark. He had inherited them from Harry's widow, Margaret, who'd lived yeah. for another 30 years or so after Harry died very young of tuberculosis in, in 1931. And um, so, yes, I had seen them before, and I, I think possibly physically I was helped to, <laughs> to, to, to hang them. Right. I remember yeah. how heavy they were. And they are very weighty. They're uh, very but weighty. But they were one of the key, the key features of the exhibition, and you know, it was selected by Nicola Gordon Bow because of their, their quality. Yeah. And just finally, then, just. To, Tell me about the the technique. Tell me about the medium that Clark used. They're, they're obviously they're they're on paper. They're on paper. Yes, and um, kind of a, 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 what they used was a long roll of paper. So it's a single piece of of uh, paper, um, and they're done in a, both a mixture of Conte and charcoal, which are very similar materials. Yeah. Uh, charcoal people will be probably more familiar with. It's kind of organic. It's it's dried wood essentially, kiln yeah. dried wood. Uh, Conte uh, is um, is more artificially manufactured, so it's it's a mixture, as I understand, of graphite and paste. It's a bit chalkier, yeah, and a bit maybe easier to control, not as messy, right? Um, but because he's using and, and Conte comes in different colours, but he's using black Conte, yeah, it's black charcoal, ultimately to actually uh, to dissect. What is Conte and what is charcoal could be a little bit difficult here because when, when when you look at when you look at the details, you know here they, they yeah. just the preciseness of the um, the charcoal or the Conte, yeah. whichever yeah. was being used, is absolutely incredible. It is it, it is remarkable. Get. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Because yeah. I think we all sort of think about charcoal as being a sort of a a broad yeah. uh, type of material that it's hard to get. A sharpness. It, it um, is, and you have to kind of keep on, uh, I guess, sharpening it. Conte would, there would be more control with it, uh, right. and that's maybe what he used for more of the um, the subtle details. Yeah. Um, but it is, uh, you know, they're, they're remarkably, when, when you compare them to the windows, the, they're remarkably close. There's one or two vignettes in the perimeter that have been changed, but other than that, you know, you're seeing the essence of it uh, very much. Uh, and it's quite interesting to kind of view a photograph uh, of the cartoon 
uh, and the, the, the window alongside. Uh, yeah, I can imagine, I can imagine. One nice little uh, detail also is the, the um, sandals. They are actually sandals, even though they look very, they're quite elaborate, but the sandaled feet of the angel on uh, the little kind of green mat. And now we can't see it's green Yes, here. yes. In fact, it is green. Uh, in, in the window and she's got like wonderful flaming red hair so she's kind of quintessential Irish angel <laughs> right. and yeah. I think we could also maybe think of this mat as representing Ireland as well yes yes because that's that sort of you know cliff face um, also appears in the in yeah. the other um, cartoons that's true that's true um, so yeah. they, I suppose it gives them a sort of a grounding um, you know to stand on they're not just floating yes it's sort of a groundedness it, it, which, it, I, which it, I love it does though on a certain level of course Clark's figures are very kind of ethereal that's true uh, they do have this kind of otherworldly uh, appearance yeah. to them uh, so um, the angel here yes is, is certainly anchored on, on, on the ground uh, but um, at the same time there's um, uh, this you know a sense of lightness and um, ethereal yes, uh, quality yes, to yeah, her absolutely um, it's also maybe worth pointing out she's carrying the uh, the flag of the re of the resurrection and it's rippling in the breeze. So mm -hmm. I think it's kind of again it's referencing maybe the Kalini location, yeah, uh, the yeah. sea, the lighthouse, all of these kind of subtle things. They yeah. all, uh, are all considered, and it's not just a you know a, a random. Yeah, deal. absolutely, absolutely. Well, David, it has been uh, wonderful to hear your thoughts on them. I mean, we're delighted, obviously, to have them for sale. Um, you know, they're included in our sale next Wednesday, the 1st of March. Mm -hmm. uh, two separate lots. We have the pair plus, plus the, the one um, following it, the Lloyd window. Um, so um, it remains to be seen what happens next week. But uh, thank you so much for sharing your, your thoughts. My pleasure. Thank you for asking me. Thank you.